Our history dates back to 1949 when Angus Laurie and Jeremy, a partnership comprising Angus Laurie and Ken Jeremy set its offices in the East Africa Protectorate of Kenya. Incidentally, the firm of Laurie Profit was formed in Uganda at about the same time. In the 1950s, John Ord joined the partnership and in the same period, the firm in Kenya became known as Pete Morick Mitchell and Company, but continued to trade as Angus Laurie and Ken Jeremy in Uganda. In 1964, Gerald Wade took over from John Ord as senior partner. Two years later, John Ord assisted the then Kenya's finance minister to draft the Central Bank of Kenya Act. The entire draft of the act was reviewed by John Ord to the satisfaction of the minister. When the Central Bank Act was uh, enacted, Kenya started now initiating its own Kenyan currency. Soon after, Paddy Kerr became senior partner of Pete Morick Mitchell in 1967. In the 1970s, Pete Morick Mitchell and company was appointed by the Central Bank of Kenya as auditors. On this engagement, the firm worked together with Panel Bell House Mwangi and company, currently Ernst & Young, to carry out the audit. In 1973, Robin Cahill joined the firm and was made an additional partner. At this time, the office in Uganda was closed because of political upheavals surrounding Idi Amin's presidency. In 1977, the East Africa community collapsed, leaving each country to chart its own economic course. In the 80s, Mitchell was dropped and the firm became known as Pete Marwick. In 1981, Andrew Gregory joined Pete Marwick to set up the insolvency department. His first engagement was Bully Tanneries and later worked on Madhu Paper when it went into receivership. In 1982, the firm moved from its Jubilee House offices to Jubilee Exchange House. In 1987, Wilfred Murethi and Anva Porbundovala became the first Kenyan partners to be appointed by PMM in Kenya. In 1988, Paddy Kerr took the helm of the organization but he was unfortunately involved in a road accident and was hospitalized until his demise. The firm operated as Pete Marwick until 1989 when as a result of the international merger between Pete Marwick International and Kleinveld Main Goy Dealer created KPMG. KPMG as well to truly become a global firm as I mentioned from the late 80s. Uh, we had a number of other international firms exploring um, uh, mergers. That is the first time we started having international assignment, even becoming to be implemented in Kenya. The Rocco firm, we assisted in providing logistic to, be, to enable them to work locally, and even providing retreasures, and even the Rocco tax registration to assist them to do the implementation. Um, and so the merger of KPMG, uh, or what was then called Pete Mawick, um, to Kleinveld uh, made Hodler, uh, to then form KPMG 1987, was, was significant. And, and this really established the global network as we know it today. Um, and, and that um, then provided a platform for us to operate um, with one standard, with one set of policies, but at the same time running independent member firms. Um, so, and that platform is still growing. Uh, there are obviously changes that are coming up now. Uh, I'm sure you have seen what is going on in the UK uh, in terms of just considering and reviewing um, the, um, uh, the, the, the role that the accounting profession plays, the way it is structured, the businesses that we, we, we participate in. So that, that, was, that was the beginning. Um, and uh, it would not come under challenge until early 2000. So that, um, uh, that structure that was formed uh, within, within, within the accounting profession. Regional expansion came in 1995 when KPMG expanded its footprint in the region by opening offices in Dar es Salaam and Kampala. Within a short period, KPMG gained recognition as a leading provider of audit, tax and advisory services through the East Africa region. We did a number of valuations of banks, uh, we did a number of preparations for privatization um, of, of, of those um, institutions um, and, and attracted investors into, uh, into, into Uganda. 
Um, the same case uh, with Tanzania. Um, we also helped with privatization programs, not moving as rapidly as, as the Uganda program. Uganda had um, a, a very uh, clear manifesto on what it is that they wanted to achieve. Tanzania, initially we went in to work with the civil service uh, reform program. Uh, in Uganda as well, we did start work in the mid-90s uh, in terms of improving the performance of the of, of the public sector again in 1995 kpmg was contracted by the catholic relief services to conduct commodity audit of relief food in ethiopia during the famine kpmg tracked the distribution and logistics of relief food from the port of masawa to distribution centers and finally to the beneficiaries kpmg ensured that the much needed relief food reached intended population and helped save lives in ethiopia we had done work around uh, commodity audits to trace the food relief that was being provided to that country after the devastating famine um, and then following that up from port through all the logistics through all the warehousing and distribution channels up to the consumers and then traveling around the markets to confirm that this food is not finding itself in shops and, and marketplaces being sold. In 1996, KPMG entered into an alliance with Jasper Semu and John Kiruthu and moved to Uganda. The firm won the audit of Uganda Commercial Bank and also helped on a number of privatizations in the country which helped transform Uganda's economy. In 1998, KPMG entered the Rwandan market as part of the firm's expansion strategy in the East African region. In 1999, KPMG was contracted to unbundle Kenya Post and Telecommunications Company, which marked the first step of transforming the telecommunication industry in Kenya. This later led to the creation of independent mobile service providers such as Safaricom and Cancel, currently known as Airtel. In the mid-90s, the World Bank and the government agreed uh, to commence privatization efforts and uh, one of the areas that we saw as catalytic to economic uh, transformation is the telecom sector um, and um, we went and brought in uh, a team um, comprised of uh, international resources combining with those of us who are here uh, in the region for example to help to unbundle the, um, the then Kenya Post and Telecommunications Corporation which was a fixed telephony provider, it was a mobile telephone provider, uh, it was a post services provider, and it was also a regulator um, for, for communications and, uh, and broadcasting. Um, so we went in and, and, and did um, a fairly detailed piece of work, uh, produced a, um, uh, a structure for the separated entities, valuations for those different entities, and provided a framework for the first uh, Communications Act uh, in 1998 um, that would then serve as the catalyst for the transformation that we are seeing in the telecom sector. In June 2000, KPMG helped the government of Uganda with the privatization of Uganda Post and Telecommunications. By this time, there were 17 partners across the region, with Anis Pringle being first female partner in KPMG East Africa and Simon Kalenzi as the first Ugandan partner. In 2001, Andrew Gregory became senior partner and CEO heading the firm for three years after which he was succeeded by Richard Ndung. In 2008, KPMG teamed up with Nation Media Group to form Top 100 Mid-Sized Survey across East Africa to identify fastest growing medium-sized companies in the East Africa and help showcase their business excellence as well as highlight the region's most successful entrepreneurship stories. The initiative has produced some of the most prolific SMEs in the region such as Cellulant, Optivan Group, Koseke Uganda Limited, among others. In 2008, Josfat Moura took over as the senior partner and CEO of KPMG East Africa. I joined KPMG uh, in 1994, initially as an independent consultant. But before that, I had worked um, with Coopers and Librand from 1984. So I was private to the developments um, in the accounting um, sector uh, in the region. and. Um, the most important thing in this business is that you've got a team and leadership that is trusted to understand the issues and to provide advice that serves the interests of the client. And it's only from there that you actually make business. 
that if you've got the trust and if you've got value that uh, the clients appreciate and are prepared to pay for and many times pay a premium for that service. Um, so from 1949 uh, in Kitale and um, the work that has been done over the years, that has built those pillars of the foundation. That we had a team of people who were properly trained and we had leadership that was focusing on the right issues. And over time, we had built a reputation of trust. We had demonstrated the value that the firm offers and that the KPMG logo, once it appears in your report, is a report that could be trusted and that could be depended upon by the users of that uh, information. So that was work that we really appreciate uh, from those who have gone before us um, in helping to stabilize, in helping to shape uh, that reputation in this market. Uh, and so that um, when you go into a client, you don't get asked, who are you? They recognize the name. Perhaps the challenge we had was a transition from Pete Mavic to KPMG. So whenever you said KPMG, they would say, oh, Pete Mavic. So making sure that that name settles um, is a very, very important contribution uh, that our predecessors, you know, I came in at the time of Robin, the late Robin Cahill. Uh, Robin Cahill was succeeded by uh, Andrew Gregory, uh, Andrew by Richard Dungu, and it is from Richard that I took over at the end of uh, 2008. And, you know, whatever had been done there had established that foundation uh, of trust. In 2009, KPMG was appointed by DFID to help set up Trademark East Africa a non-profit agency that aims to promote regional trade and economic integration in East Africa. KPMG helped to set up and staff its headquarters in Nairobi and later offices in Kampala, Dar es Salaam, Bujumbura and Arusha. In 2010, KPMG Rwanda has launched and had its first offices at Omega Boulevard in Kigali. The firm later moved to its current location at Grand Pension Plaza. The Rwanda firm was later appointed to audit Central Bank of Rwanda and by 2018, it had audited 11 of the country's 16 banks and 11 of the 16 insurance companies. We were the, one of the key firms that was auditing banks in Rwanda. Uh, so the central bank would look up to us. Um, and, and so th that experience was uh, very good uh, at that time. Now, then come to the second KPMG. I alluded earlier to the office of the Auditor General's office. Now that office uh, had been um, setting up, but uh, uh, the Auditor General then required that their staff be upskilled. So we seconded a number of uh, managers uh, from KPMG to go there and to work with the staff of the OAG um, in terms of planning for audits, uh, we were covering all entities that are related to the government, uh, which are ministries, um, government agencies uh, from the national level, provincial level, district level. Um, and, and that involvement uh, uh, has been going on even to date. A lot of capacity has been built and I'm quite proud to say that uh, uh, the institution of the OAG in Rwanda is one of the offices that is considered to be um, an office that issues reports of high quality, uh, reports that when they go to parliament, uh, they are very clear, concise, because one of our mandates was to make sure that uh, the, the findings and the reports and the way uh, they are drafted are clear and concise. In 2011, KPMG was engaged by the government of South Sudan shortly after independence to manage the young country's treasury. In 2013, after over three decades in Nairobi Central Business District, KPMG Kenya relocated from Lonro House offices in Nairobi CBD to its present location at ABC Place along Waiyaki Way. In 2015, KPMG East Africa admitted 163 university graduates across the region, making it the largest graduates recruits class ever. In the run-up to the 2017 general elections in Kenya, K 
KPMG was engaged to conduct the audit of the Register of Voters. The team worked tirelessly to deliver its mandate amid tight timelines and heightened political tensions to inspire confidence in Kenya's electoral process. This process that we are going through in the celebrations will help every person in the farm first of all. And that is our major focus, that every single person in the farm can reflect and understand this transformation and understand whether you're an alumni or a current employee, you understand the contribution that you have made to that transformation and how you can grow like the other people who have grown uh, in the farm uh, over the years. This is important uh, for us. The second uh, focus is for our clients to see the markets that we have served, the sectors that we have served, the clients that we have served, and to see the transformation and value that those clients have realized. Whether you look at the telecom sector, as I mentioned, the financial sector, or a business like um, uh, Diageo's uh, East Africa Breweries, where I remember conversations we were having on strategy and the restructuring of that business. Um, so each of these uh, opportunities for our clients to see and have faith in this brand and say, you know what, if I work with KPMG, I can achieve my own aspirations as a business and I can look back with fulfillment, with satisfaction at what it is that we have achieved. This, this is very important and it is part of bringing that promise to life. It's a demonstration that this promise that we have as part of our strategy is not something new. It is actually something that has been demonstrated over time. That when you go in and you identify clients that fit the bill for KPMG, because that's also important, we don't work with everybody, and you decide who within those clients are people you can work with and shape the agenda for the client to realize the change that you want within that client, um, and then over years, you can look back and celebrate the achievements, the transformation uh, at a country level, at a regional level, at a client level, at a farm level, and at a personal level. Uh, this for me is going to be very, very important in inspiring confidence in the farm to understand that KPMG is not an overnight business. It's not everything we are doing has got background to it, has structure, um, has, has underpinnings that give it root um, and that you can depend on uh, for your career, uh, for your business as a client uh, uh, going forward. Um, and the other significance of this milestone um, is that it is an opportunity for us to thank those who have gone before us and preserve the brand to this level where we have a trusted brand to work with. And then to assume that responsibility ourselves, that we will do whatever is necessary to also raise the trust and value of the brand so that those who come after us will also look back 70 years from now and celebrate those of us who went before them and say that we left them with a trust, with a value that they can leverage on and continue to build their brand beyond uh, 100 years, beyond 200 years in the region. Our unwavering dedication to integrity, focus on quality and passion to make the difference has transformed many livelihoods in our region. We remain committed to deliver timeless value to our colleagues, clients and communities with the same resolve that we've had since 1949 to inspire confidence and empower change.